Thank you, Monica. This is Bob Aschenbrenner. Uh, as Monica mentioned, we're going to talk about the role of a solutions provider and even define what a solutions provider really is, uh, and specifically for the space of mobile workers. Uh, and there are so many different mobile workers uh, in so many different industries that all benefit from mobile technology, um, whether that, that be a tablet or a handheld. Generally, it starts with a screen and uh, uh, some kind of computing capability to bring information to the service worker or the field worker. But it's not just the device. It's the wireless to get there. It's the software application. It's how it's used. It's security, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But all those issues are issues that lots of different industries face, whether it's in inspections and on-site diagnostics, whether it's in maintenance and repair, in nursing and patient care, in uh, outdoor work that uses GIS uh, applications. There are so many different mobile applications, all of which benefit from a real solutions provider. Darren, you've been delivering solutions to mobile workers for a long time. Do you see a big variety of, of customer sets? Hey, Bob, and uh, thanks for inviting me to uh, to the webinar and certainly glad to share um, whatever knowledge that, that I've gleaned in the 16 years that I've been um, in the rugged mobile computing both from a, a, a reseller integrator uh, and solutions provider role as well as working um, you know, specifically with the OEM manufacturing side of the business. But you're absolutely right, and I think this, this, uh, this slide really gives a, a very good breakdown of just some simple um, vertical applications for inspection and maintenance, repair, customer service. Um, but I think what's key is to really focus on the, the, the multiple applications that live within these lines of business and ultimately leads to what we're going to present today, which is, you know, that, that mobility isn't an out-of-the-box solution, and it really is end-user specific. And every end-user um, is different in terms of how they use the device. So I think we all can probably talk whether or not um, and go well beyond this slide, whether it's aviation, transportation, trucking, logistics, public sector, the development and the use of, of rugged mobile devices is certainly on the on the rise. Yeah, the use is on the rise, and a lot of employees expect mobile technology now because most people at home have smartphones, they have iPads and Android tablets. They use mobile tech every day. It's a matter of course. So they really come to expect it when they go to work as a tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I, I totally agree with that, Bob. I, I think, you know, um, I can speak for myself that, you know, six years ago I don't think I owned an iPad in my home, and today I own four, uh, and that probably includes the one for the dog. But, you know, the reality is is that if you look at the data and look at the industry indicators with companies like Venture Data Corporation or VDC, what you're going to see is that they project actually a 19% growth in line of business tablet field-based computing uh, adoption and you know unfortunately that means a lot of them are trying a lot of different technologies but at the end of the day they're going to end back at the at the things that really um, are, are requirements if you will for rugged mobility and that certainly is screen brightness outdoor and daylight viewability ruggedization heat vibration dust humidity drop spills all those things that lend themselves to a business case for rugged Yeah, those are the characteristics that aren't in the obvious tablet that's used for the home use. Um, but to make that device work, it's really mm -hmm. an orchestration, isn't it, of lots of different pieces. It's not just putting the right tablet with the right outdoor view and full screen and the right uh, water resistance. It's, it's more than that, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is really the crust of the call today is, is that, you know, what we're seeing uh, from the group mobile side and what um, really is starting to show even more um, pervasively within the market is that it truly is an orchestration um, between the, the actual device and it fitting the end user application, but also how that device manages its connectivity and then um, certainly how it, it hooks into the back end network infrastructure. And every customer is different. Um, every customer uh, infrastructure is different, and I think that's really the value of what a solutions provider will bring is specifically and, and wholly in regards to 
um, the ability to understand and, and provide solutions that put those three key elements together. Yeah, I think that's a, a good point about how so many different organizations are different in how they approach the solution. And I think that's why you see uh, there's no out-of-the-box mobile solution. Um, these systems need a, a mobile approach, but unlike consumer devices where an iPad and an Android tablet basically deliver the same capabilities, you see different customers who have different needs. And I think that's the reality of it. I think that's why, in fact, there's such a wide variety of rugged devices and handheld devices for field service and other outdoor workers, uh, utility workers, uh, et cetera, because they do have their own use models. They do have their own ways of, of doing things. Mm -hmm. But they do have some commonality, too, don't they? Like, they may have different handhelds for one class of workers, different rugged tablets for another class of workers, but they all have to mm -hmm. concern themselves with security, or they all have to concern themselves mm -hmm. with wireless networks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So there's some things that are that are um, you know consistent within the rugged mobile solution, um, and I think that at the end of the day, what organizations are trying to do is to put the right device in the right user's hand that solves the business problem, or or really provides a business process improvement for adoption of technology. And at the end of the day, that's really what what drives um, um, you know the funding and the revenue associated to. Um, you know, being able to, to deploy those kinds of solutions. Um, sorry for the background noise. Um, that's what happens when you're working downtown Chicago. <laughs> but um, a truly mobile, and, and I think, you know, more so than that, you know, this is all about real-time data to the point of work, and the only way you can do that um, is to orchestrate, again, those three elements to where the back-end infrastructure, the web-based architectures, for software and information is properly connected to the network and then properly displayed on a device that actually is in the end user's hands that solves their problem or improves their process. And and so that this slide actually shows you know the multiple elements of that and the other components that could be involved um, in the solution that would solve that problem. Right. Uh, we definitely see a lot of variety in this market. Uh, docks and mounts for vehicles, for example, most companies that make rugged devices offer docks and mounts, but there's also a very vibrant uh, market out there for uh, other devices that can hold these same units in a vehicle because different customers want different things. Yeah, absolutely. I am totally and, agree. Totally agree. And, and, th and that's why um, there have been some customers who have tried to do a plug-and-play approach, who have tried to pick up units that probably are designed for commercial use, not consumer as much, but commercial rather than rugged. Uh, and I think they struggle to get an ROI from that, right, to, to, get a, to make that work. They do. They do because the ROI, um, you know, really is, is every bit as important about the user adoption of the device and the technology. And so if it's not been baked out, if it's not been vetted, if it's not been, um, you know, put in the end user's hand in a test scenario um, where they actually see all those components working together on the right device, uh, what you get is, is, a, is a nice paperweight that somebody spent money on. So if you uh, spend all the money in the world to try to, you know, uh, put the right solution together, but you put it on a device that the user can't see it outside or the first time they drop it, it breaks, they have a tendency to go back and gravitate to um, what they've always done before, uh, which in a lot of cases is paper-based, um, or even using old technology that, that doesn't necessarily improve the process of what they're trying to, to, to uh, resolve. So out-of-the-box solutions, no, I, I, I would tell you um, every indication, and that's one of the things that I love about this business is the fact that in every scenario, every meeting is different. Every customer uses different software, different devices, different networks, different infrastructure. Um, their users are doing different jobs, um, all even within different lines of business within that, that user group. So it's difficult to find a single device that you can buy out of the box in a plug-and-play scenario and, and actually get the value that the customer expects. Right, and, and that's why from, our, from my perspective, from the manufacturer side, we want our customers to go to a knowledgeable solutions provider so that 
the products that are sold are successful in the whole environment because it looks bad if if the environment doesn't work. It looks bad on every piece in that environment. So we really want our customers to talk to somebody who's knowledgeable, who has had the experience, uh, and to do pilots, et cetera. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I'm sorry, ahead, Bob. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, you know, it's, it's funny that you say that because a lot of these solutions really are under the hood, whether or not it's a mounting or a docking solution or a software application. At the end of the day, the manufacturer really does want a solutions integrator to work as their partner, and that's the value that the partner brings. And the reason why is if all of those pieces don't work together seamlessly and the and the, the provider, the solutions provider doesn't understand that and can't deliver that solution, the only brand that they ever see a lot of times is the brand that's on the back of the hardware that gets blamed for the woes of the lack of the whole system integration that needs to take place. So certainly from our perspective, you know, that's one of the things we try to do at, at Group Mobile is to, to make sure we understand those elements so that Everything looks good, runs right, and, and solves the business problem that makes um, everybody look good. Yes, and that's in contrast to other types of mobile tech providers that are out there mm -hmm. um, in the industry. There are resellers mm -hmm. that are really not value-add in the industry. Um, and what they tend to do is they tend to make margin by just selling units. So when a customer calls, um, they quickly try to understand what the customer is first thinking of, and then they say, that's perfect. I can get you those for this price. And that's not really uh, getting involved with the customer and understanding mm -hmm. the process. Uh, mm -hmm. And also, there's some other providers who have everything, but they don't really mm -hmm. offer the in-depth wor in work, do they? No, I think, I think being in the rugged mobile space and being a solutions provider is somewhat, um, um, in a lot of cases, a lost art. And you know, some of that has to do with the advent of how procurement and how technology is procured in today's market. And, you know, uh, at the, uh, you know, what, what we understand is that if we're truly going to bring a solution beyond a procurement or a purchase, and in a lot of cases that's what, you know, um, resellers like to do is to sell the customer what they, what they really want to buy, which in some cases may only want, may only be part of it. So we find ourselves sitting with the line of business first and the end user first to understand the application, the business problem, and what we're trying to solve, and then bring in IT, then bring in procurement so that the actual solution um, and the benefit of the ROI that comes with that solution stays intact. Yeah, I think the next slide really talks about what a customer should look for, what a real solutions provider can bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, you know, I'm not one that's going to, you know, go bullet point by bullet point, but I think, um, you know, it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty basic from our perspective is, you know, um, that the solutions provider needs to understand first what the, the business solution or the business issue is and, and actually sit down with the customer and commit to solving that problem and or coming up with solutions that can solve that problem for the customer. And that's, that's part of the value add. And then, you know, certainly um, being familiar with the customer's own business systems and asking the right questions, what are the applications you're running? Are you running CAD? Are you running AVL? Are you running dispatch? Do you need GPS? All of these things eventually work themselves back in the functionality of the device. But, you know, no one wants to buy something that they're not going to ever use a function. So understanding um, all aspects of the business, that at the end of the day, you know, you can read through the rest of the bullet points, but at the end, at the end of it, you know, the solution provider really needs to be able to come back with something that fits the customer's requirement and fits within their, their mobile strategy for a, um, a long-term benefit um, to both the end users and to the ROI of the corporation. Yes, staying on the slide for a second, uh, you and I had a discussion a while back that I thought you made a really good point, which is that when you're talking to a customer who's thinking about deploying a mobile solution, you really want to see people from mobile departments in that meeting. Mm -hmm. they, it's kind yeah. of a nice slide for you, I think you said, if only one department is represented, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that's even more critical because, you know, a lot of times what happens is, and end users will say this on the line of business, that, you know, IT will make a decision um, somewhat in a, in a vacuum um, around, a commercial grade device um, because that's what the corporate standard is and not really understand the true needs of the line of business and, and therefore the technology doesn't ever really get adopted. So a critical element 
to being a solutions provider and to truly bring value is that is there's an orchestration that happens in the early stages where it's not just IT, it's not just procurement, um, it is the line of business, and and that you know that there's a clear uh, communication of the reasons why certain things have to be rugged and they have to be a certain type of device so that the people that are involved in the actual you know start to finish and we all know sales process processes in this business for a solution can be 12 to 18 months and that's not uncommon but during that process the communication and the coordination between all those departments become critical so that at the end of the at the end of the of the purchase order that comes across actually reflects what the line of business wants yeah, I mean, you've talked about a lot, and the slides has talked a lot about what a good solutions provider is. It's not just a buzzword, but it nets down to you should look for somebody who has real mobility experience, uh -huh. and on top of that, has the skills to address specific needs. Yeah, and I think you can even take it a step further than that. You know, um, a, a solutions provider really does act on behalf of the um, partnerships um, and alliances that go with that, and the ability to tap those alliances around the specific requirements of the customer and bring those solutions together in a, in a package that they can look at and, and see the real value. And so, you know, yes, it's, it's, it's partially, um, and, and I would say, you know, mobile, mobile and mobility experience is, um, is not something that you can put a book in front of somebody and teach them. It is a real world experience being in front of the customer in all kinds of different applications. And even though um, the end user may somewhat eat the same dog food in terms of data, you know, data is data, you hear that said a lot. Um, not every organization is the same and the, and the pieces have a tendency to move in terms of how they're positioned to get to a true solution. Right, because um, mobile robots are in fact complicated. There's so many different pieces. Mm -hmm. That's why there's a renewed interest in, in solution providers. Um, but in many cases, uh, there are field workers who aren't that computer literate. Um, mm -hmm. While there are lots of field workers who have technology at home and they expect it in the field, I think there's also a class of people who may have a PC at home for email or internet browsing and maybe one of their kids set it up for them. And <laughs> So those people walk into, the, they have great skills in the field. They're very valuable to the organization. Then you walk in uh -huh. and say, here's a mobile tool that's going to make your life easier. And uh -huh. they don't start out thinking you're right, do they? No, and that happens a lot. And, and one of the things that I usually try to coach, um, especially, you know, in, in a lot of cases, Bob, you know, if you look within public sector, you look in with utility, some of these organizations are on their second, third, or fourth rollouts of technology. Um, but that technology use, and you know, I can use utilities as an example. Um, when utilities first adopted, it was you know put them out on a dock and a PC, and now you're mobile. But if you talk to the utility companies today, it's not about that. It's how do I get outside the vehicle, and that's really where technology is expanded even further to include tablets, you know, uh, devices that are lighter weight, better battery run times, all the rest of those good things. You know, um, but you hit on a really good point that you know when you try to put your testing and your evaluation together, um, it's not it, it's not always a good thing to just pick the technology savvy people to do your testing and evaluation. You do have a blended um, user group that has um, sensitivity to technology and the adoption of. And I always um, advise customers to um, to try to tie their mobile technology adoption, especially if it's a new process or a new uh, platform to something that's critical to what they do in their daily activities, you know, pulling up uh, maintenance manuals, clocking in, clocking out. You know, these are things that are critical that people have to do to do their job, and that gets them used to the device, and it also gets them to get feedback on whether or not they're going to deploy the right device from that type of user. Yeah, well, I saw a great example of that a few months ago when I visited a utility customer who had rolled mm -hmm. out uh, some tablets and at first, their technicians were a little suspicious about whether it would help them do their job. The meeting I went to was about six months after it was rolled out. Rolled out, and they were asking IT, "When can we get this feature? When can we can get this feature?" IT was saying, "That's scheduled for next quarter." But the techs were like, "Why not now?" It was wonderful to see that transition from, "Is this really going to work for me?" to, "Boy, this works great for me." 
Yeah, I would agree with that. And, and and then you have then you have the opposite side of that. Actually, on the hardware side, is look, I know we need a platform <clears throat> that we can grow on, one that's got an i7 processor. And even though I may not need a fingerprint reader today, um, we may, for security somewhere down the road, need biometrics. Or, you know, we're not using GPS today, but I know we're going to be putting in outage management, um, AVL, and dispatch. So you know what? I really do need that device with um, GPS as well. And what you find is customers have a tendency to try to be forward thinking to the future applications that can be added for additional ROI and value benefit to the user. Right. And um, the solutions provider should be the one-stop shopping, so to speak. Not only do they have the equipment they can sell, they have the expertise they can sell. Actually, which is, I think, the way you work it is it's all built into the whole rolled-out price, right? It is. And, you know, I think that, that the fact of the matter is customers have really come to expect some level of understanding of mobility and, 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 being, uh, and providing a solution. And although you don't necessarily see it as a consulting services line item on the invoice, um, you know, there is a tremendous value of selling, you know, advantage that comes along with um, being able to come back with a solution to the customer that details out all the, the elements. And you'll see a slide later on that talks about really putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. But if you're going to differentiate, and which we do here you know, at Group Mobile, is we try to differentiate ourselves because of our industry knowledge and experience working within those applications. And that's something that really is a value add that the customer looks for um, and, and certainly is a, a key de determining factor um, you know, that, that helps with award. Um, Certainly, price becomes an issue at some point as procurement goes through. But if we've done our job and we've put our, our solutions together for the customer and we've had all those elements put together and we keep the solution together, that becomes less of an issue. Right. So, Darren, what we've done is we have a few slides in here to talk about one kind of mobile rollout to try to bring to life all the different issues that have to be considered before you have one good rollout. And we picked law enforcement. I mean, there's so many different fields. Uh, organizations and styles. We pick law enforcement partly mm -hmm. because I think most people can identify with with law enforcement. Mm -hmm. So we we'll go to the next slide mm -hmm. and start talking about all the things you have to consider for this kind of a rollout. Well, I think what's important is whether or not it's law enforcement, whether or not it's utility, whether or not it's field service, um, whether or not it's a truck driver, um, long haul truck driver. <clears throat> what they're being asked to do in this supposed remote office. Um, it, it looks different than it's ever looked before, and this is really just kind of a, a slide that suck, you know that shows, you know, that they're not just carrying guns and badges; that they're being expected to work with smartphones and laptops and do electronic ticketing and have fingerprint readers and printers and surveillance video, in-car video, body worn, and you have all of these devices inside this vehicle. And the law enforcement officer really needs to know how to use all of that technology. So the challenge. Um, that we took on when looking at this solution was, you know, what are the key elements of, of, the, of, of trying to put together a solution that was going to help them save in cost of connectivity um, and secure reliability of connection and um, ultimately allow all of these, these um, devices to work um, in harmony inside the vehicle to make the law enforcement officer actually more functional. It's like making the vehicle into an office. Ultimately, yeah, and it, uh, you go to the next slide, whether or not it's a police vehicle in that slide or a utility truck or a delivery truck, it's the same thing. You have these, you have these mobile offices that are driving on the roads, and they're expected to, uh, to be a mobile office and maintain real-time information and data to the back-end network and infrastructure, and that comes along with security um, and how do you tap into those networks to make sure that um, it's done in a secure manner. Um, and, and done with reliability. So um, the problem that you have, and I think any user would tell you this, is that you know if you're talking connectivity, they're literally all all kinds, right? I mean, we all remember Rev Zero, we all remember Rev A, we all remember you know 3G, 4G. Justin Bieber may show up in a 6G T-shirt next year, and as a customer, how do you put something in an architecture that actually gives some forward thinking to that? And then allows you to not only transmit data specifically over certain segments of that of those networks. If you go to the next slide, there's actually the solution that we came up with 
um, which really was a mobile router inside the vehicle that you know has both Wi-Fi, GPS, um, VoIP, RFID. Um, it does local area, wide area. It creates the vehicle into its own wireless network and infrastructure, running multiple devices off of one node on the network. From the officer perspective or the agency perspective, they only have to worry about securing one pipe to their back-end network infrastructure. And certainly, Siege's compliance um, likes this kind of solution because not only are you talking about secure VPN, but you're also talking about one connection to the back end. Unless you're offloading data, um, like in car video, a very large offload, you wouldn't want to do that over your 4G network. You would want to do that over your 802.11 network. Right, and CGIS is, what you mentioned, CGIS mm -hmm. is the criminal justice information system managed by the FBI that has significantly stringent security requirements. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I can, you know, it's interesting you bring up CGIS because, you know, there's even a lot of confusion on CGIS um, in terms of what's compliant and what's not. And even if you go back and through CGIS um, regulations, requirements, and the things, the other things that you have seen that CGIS has put out, um, there's even confusion on their side. You know, it was once if you put the PC in the car and it never comes out, uh, therefore it is assumed that it is secure. Um, but not every agency runs that way. And then you see some will say, okay, well, um, you know, it, it's having one node and a wireless hub, and that's secure. Um, other states, and every state's a little different. Every state has its own um, law enforcement agency for oversight. So, you know, trying to come up with something that, you know, suits multiple agencies um, that, you know, fits all requirements for CGIS compliance is pretty tough. Yeah, that's another good example of how the requirement for for two levels of security means different things mm -hmm. in different states and different jurisdictions. And yep, as a, as absolutely. a provider, you have to be ready to handle what that jurisdiction wants. Mm -hmm. So this talk, and so, you know, talk about the puzzle that you mentioned earlier and how it all needs mm -hmm. to fit together. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think this, this, this slide ultimately really shows, you know, the different components, and, and certainly there are you know, providers, um, you know, that, that uh, fit within these pieces of the puzzle. At the center of it is really your turnkey solutions provider that can provide a end-to-end -end solution. And, you know, from a customer perspective, there is a tremendous value of a one hand to shake and one throat to choke and one call to make um, when it comes to the coordination of these elements and, and certainly the operational side of making sure that as you as you roll out those strategies, that they're they're absolutely um, uh, you know stay in step. So as you start to roll out, um, you have to plan for your vehicle access. You have to plan for the mounting and the docking, the installation services, then your PCs, your imaging. All of those things is again another orchestration that the solution provider brings a, a value to. Well, thanks, Darren. I think uh, that's a pretty good outline of why people are asking for solutions provider, even if they don't know the phrase, they are asking for <laughs> how am I going to make all this work? And mm -hmm. um, you know, what we've seen uh, in various customer sets is the more successful rollouts are the ones where people have used other experts to help them think through not just this quarter or this year's rollout, but a, a multiple year rollout. 